Hi students. Today is the continuation of yesterday's class that was on introduction and component parts of lime pozzolano cement. Today we will be proceeding with the process of it. The outline of today's class goes like this. Lime pozzolano cement, process of manufacturing the components, its characteristics. The raw materials for lime pozzolano cement are there are many ways in which pozzolano can be produced. The following sources of pozzolano are commonly used powder burnt clay, fly ash, rice husk ash. In previous class, we have already addressed the constituents of lime pozzolano cement. Today, we will be studying in detail of these components. Let us start with powdered burnt clay. It is made either by artificially burning clay in a kiln or by selecting wastes of burnt clay materials like bricks, tiles and pottery. When clay is burnt in a kiln for the purpose of making pozzolano, it is desirable to select a soil with high proportion of clay. If the clay occurs along with large amount of sand, the sand may be removed by sieving to obtain high clay soil. This is necessary since sand is a dilute and does not react with lime in the manner in which pozzolano does. The high clay soil may now be made into thin briquettes. Briquettes means a basket kind. The wet clay may be spread on the level ground to a thickness of about 2.5 cm and they are then sliced into thin cakes of size 10 by 10 wherein thickness is maintained as 2.5 cm itself. These cakes may now be dried and then charged into the kiln with the alternate layers of firewood, the same what we have studied in the previous class with respect to lime. Usually the firewood used could be around 10% of the weight of clay with the amount of firewood. A temperature of about 700 degrees centigrade can be expected. The burnt clay may now be pulverized to about 90 micron sieve size particles. Ball mills are usually used for this purpose. This pozzolano can store in bags indefinitely without any loss of its reactivity. This is all about powdered burnt clay. Now let us study fly ash. Fly ash is a pozzolano which is ultimately obtained from thermal power plant and which is pulverized coal in the fuel. The fine particles of coal which are collected in electrostatic precipitators are known as fly ash. They contain significant amount of amorphous silica and alumina wherein thermal power plants also produce significant amount of coal ash in the form of pond ash and bottom ash. These type of ashes are generally not good as pozzolana. Fly ash is a waste product and may be considered as a zero thermal energy material unlike burnt clay which needs specific energy inputs. This is all about fly ash. Let us study rice husk ash. Rice husk ash is a natural source of silica. Normally rice husk contains about 20% silica and the rest of it is combustible material which burns off. This silica is amorphous and if the husk is burnt under control condition, a highly pozzolanic ash can be produced. You, you just can see the figure below which shows typical arrangement of burning rice husk ash and we have two different methods for it. You just can see a honeycomb kiln for combination pozzolano. I'll just discuss how the procedure takes place. Honeycomb kiln is an annular honeycomb brick structure which is erected and closely spaced mesh and is placed at a height of about 20 cm above the ground. You just can see below which is 20 cm height. Alternative layers of rice husk and clay are placed in the kiln such that the husk is about 30 to 40 percent by the weight of clay. Here we are mixing clay as well as rice husk. The width of the clay layer should be about 15 cm less than the width of the husk to permit easy air movement through the bed of husk. The stack is now set fire to form 
below and the entire mass burns out over one or two days. The end product is a mixture of burnt clay as well as rice husk. This may be grounded in the ball mill to obtain fine pozzolano. Combination pozzolano is obtained from this process which is a mixture of burnt clay and rice husk ash and this technique has an advantage of producing a relatively large quantity of pozzolana. It must be noted that national availability of rice husk ash is around 2 million tons of combination pozzolano which can be generated in the country. And we have another arrangement for burning rice husk ash. Let us see in the next slide. Yes, this is a typical sketch of rice husk burner which is also known as tube in the basket burner and it has an annular mesh enclosure in which rice has stacked and set fire from the bottom. The entire mass burns over several hours with the central opening acting as a chimney. You just can see annular mesh enclosure, rice husk placed in between. There is a provision for hot air at the right side and copper tube is placed in order to pass the hot air. Here on the left side you just can see the provision for input that is cold water is inserted in between and you also can see the in between annular mesh wherein the spacing is placed between 27.5 centimeters as a whole. Wherein this copper tube carrying water may be inserted in the bed of husk to generate hot water from the burning husk. This technique also leads to good quality pozzolano. Yes, this is all about the materials or the components or the constituents of the lime pozzolano cement. Let us study the process of lime pozzolano cement. It is an intimate mixture of lime and pozzolano which will be set in the presence of water forming calcium silicate and calcium aluminate compounds. In the traditional lime surki mortar, slaked lime and brick powder is mixed and ground in the presence of moisture especially we use bullock driven motor mills and the ground moist mixture which is directly used in the construction but when we talk about modern context power driven pan mills are used to grind the mortar unlike portland cement which is already a complete cementitious product lime pozzolano cement needs an additional step of mixing lime pozzolano the efficiency of lime pozzolano cement depends on the intimacy of the mixing of lime as well as pozzolano. But where in traditional process of lime surki mortar involved wet grinding of lime and surki mixture. According to the studies of KRS dam site, it was found that the mortar strength reaches a maximum when the duration of grinding in 35 minutes. Grinding for longer or shorter duration leads to lower the strength. Students can have a project work on it by using this what called as combination and the duration of grinding. However, in the context of modern construction, wet grinding may be considered to be an inconvenient procedure because with this needs deployment of diesel engine or electric energy at the site for motor mixing. It would be real or an ideal if we if wet grinding can be avoided. This is all about the process but we have two alternative techniques which have been explored at Department of Civil Engineering IISC Bangalore. They have given dry blending of lime and pozzolano as well as wet blending, wet blending of lime and pozzolano. Let us study both in detail. Let us begin with dry blending of lime and pozzolano. In this technique the slaked lime and pozzolano should be separately processed as a dry powders. The pozzolano may be dry ground in fineness of 90 micron. The two powders may now be blended in a ball mill for duration of about one hour. In this technique, the size production of lime and pozzolano is carried out first and mixing the two is carried out subsequently. This mixture is then added to a sand and after thorough dry mixing, water is added to 
complete the preparation of mortars. This procedure also means that dry mixture of lime and pozzolano may have to be stored in bags. This also leads to the question of shelf life of lime pozzolano mixture. It was found that lime pozzolano mixture will lose the strength rapidly on storage. And there is a case study which has addressed that there would be a 60% reduction after 21 days of storage in gunny bags or LDPE bags. One more important thing to be noted that blended dry mixture of lime and pozzolano should not be stored more than 14 days if the strength reduction is to be less than 10%. Even this can be a project work for the students so that you just can determine what could be the exact days wherein we can store your lime as well as pozzolano separately as a dry powder so that we will not reduce, get reduced with the strength of less than 10%. The poor shelf life of pozzolano mixture is probably one reason why this approach alternative cement has not succeeded. This is all about dry blending and when we come to wet blending of lime and pozzolano, in this approach the pozzolano has to be produced and ground to 90 micron fineness and stored in gummy bags or woven LDPE bags. The pozzolano can be stored indefinitely. Slake lime may be freshly produced by slaking quick lime at the site. At site you just can prepare a lime wherein pozzolano can be stored in gunny bags irrespective of days. The slaked lime and the well ground pozzolano may now be mixed in a simple drum or a hand mixing concrete mixture in the presence of water at the site itself. After blending the two for about 20 minutes the lime pozzolano slurry now be poured over a sand and mix thoroughly to get the lime pozzolano mortars. This is about the process of lime pozzolono and the techniques mentioned by IACPP. Thank you students. In the next class we will be studying properties and uses and fly ash as a pozzolono material. Thank you.